Hello, and welcome to the Rat Nest Podcast, episode number 17, with so many people I can't name them all. Woo! <laughs> we've got David Moses, we've got Tom Neely, we've got Chris Coulon, aka Tallboy. We're going to be talking about type. Type. Why? Because they're amazing illustrators, and I want to see what they have to say about the thing that no one wants to talk about. Letters. Mm. Mm. Let's get right mm. into it. So, David. You guys, mm-hmm. you and Tom had a little communication on your Patreon. Um, I don't know. What do you call it? Patreon extra for your your loyal members where it's a conversation about a type. It's a typeface mm-hmm. that um, Steve Ditko and well, it was used in a Stanley Steve Ditko comic, uh, kind of like an obscure title, right? Uh-oh. Yeah, yeah. So in uh, Amazing Adult Fantasy specifically, there's one uh, like title uh, typeface that they use. It's not actually a typeface. It's a font, um, that Artie Stimmick, the great letterer of the Marvel universe, along with Sam Rosen, but Artie Stimmick used this specifically. And, um, I did sort of like a recreation of a Ditko page and I was using this font and I got really fascinated by it. And so I started tracking it down. I went through like over 200 old comics to try and find, okay, where is this? this font and, and, you know, when was it used? How was it used? And it was a very narrow window of time where it was used, uh, in, in full effect. And, uh, and so I just wrote up a couple of, uh, blog posts about it on my Patreon and collected it into a zine. And, uh, I reached out to Tom, uh, for like a, uh, interview about how he letters and some of the uh, processes, uh, mechanical process, pieces and approach to it so um so that's how we connected on that yeah awesome and tom you're i mean you need no introduction i could say that you're a new york times best-selling uh illustrator if i may can i say that i mean i guess so yeah it's correct right (laughs) yeah Um, well i mean the book i illustrated is a new york times bestseller i don't know if i'm the best-selling part of it (laughs) <laughs> the uh, last last podcast guys have a pretty big following, so. <laughs> but um, yeah, I illustrated a book for them last year. But then you you've also been working on your uh, comic. Sorry, uh, you guys have, you've also been working on a line of comics on your own, including uh, Glenn and Henry Forever and the Humans. Uh, a little bit more of a straightforward comic. How much type? Uh, do you worry about on an issue? Because obviously the dialogue to move the story along or whatever points you're trying to make, but is, is the big part of the type issue, the cover? I guess. Um, well, I'm, I'm not sure what I understand that so, the cover. Uh, so the, the cover art of your, of a comic, do you think right. that that is the most important, uh, type you're going to work on for that comic? Uh, not necessarily. I mean, it, it has a different weight because, yeah, you're you're creating a, a, a logo and a title for, for your uh, book that should hopefully stand out among the others. Um, so, yeah, it, it has a different kind of importance, uh, I think, than the, the lettering within the book. But I, I tend to treat it all kind of equally. Uh, uh, I do all of my, <clears throat> almost everything by hand. Uh, don't use computers for anything except scanning and uh, coloring. Um, but, uh, so yeah. Um, I treat, uh, the lettering within, uh, I treat it all very equal to the drawings. I think it's just the same, the same kind of process as the drawings on the page. And it's an integral part of the entire piece. So kind of think of it all at the same time. (laughs) Yeah. Is that, I mean, you don't ever add or, um, type to already formed illustration when you're working on something. Is that something you try to avoid or try to do everything at the same time? Uh, I just, I'm kind of old school. I've just always preferred doing everything by hand on the paper with pen and ink. So uh, if I'm, if there's word balloons, I'm lettering it on the page. If there's sound effects, I'm drawing it into the art just as as I would any other piece of the art. So uh, to me, it's all integral as one piece uh, of the same page to me. I can't really... I've tried separating them for different jobs uh, when I've been hired for other, uh, for stuff. I'm talking about mostly my personal work has all been hand lettering. Um, like I worked on some Guar comics that were lettered by somebody else. 
and uh, I've worked on some other stuff that were lettered in other ways or had to be lettered by computers so that they could be translated. And uh, I'm just never really happy with the results. I I'm pref I'm just prefer doing it all by hand on the, on the page. So, I, I, <clears throat> David, was there so, a question? Yeah, <laughs> I've got, I've got like a bunch of questions, but, um, so let me ask this one. Uh, so do you do a new title for every single cover? Like, do you do the humans? Okay. You've got that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you, you stick no, to yeah, the same header. Yeah, the title logo is its own piece. Um, so I do, yeah, I do just do some assemblage uh, of layering and stuff in design and layout in the computer as well. But I'm talking about like, uh, especially for like the cover design. Um, but the pages themselves, so the lettering will probably be on the page itself. So, um, okay. but yeah, the covers, the uh, the lettering is usually separate just for uh, just for reasons of design versatility. Oh, news. Yeah. So, okay. Chris, when you were doing a uh, night watch, so for those who don't know, a uh, night watch zine, um, is a brainchild of Chris and his wife, Krusty Jane. Uh, they had an amazing collection of artists work on the zine over the 12 issues that they did. Amazing guy. And every cover was done. Uh, was every cover done by a different artist? Um, I think so. Yeah, we did uh, thirteen issues all together, and every I think everyone was by a different artist. I uh, I might have done two because I did the first one, right? And then I wanted to do like a crazier one because it started out super basic, like a really simple cover for the first one. It was like that priest drinking. Um, he's like drinking wine that says holy water, and he's like puking. And then yeah, that one. <laughs> and then <laughs> people it. just started doing like insane it, like the it almost became like who could do the most detailed cover and then later on i think around like issue 10 yeah like, like megan lemay yeah she just insane she, that's Unreal. probably the craziest cover but then later on i was like oh i want to do a crazy one so i did too hmm. but um i wanted to say when you you're asking tom about the um like the title lettering as opposed to like the word bubbles and stuff i feel like the 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 cover lettering might be like the fun like the funnest lettering because it's almost like i don't know it, it you can just kind of like it almost always has to be like centered i feel like and you can get like more illustrated with the lettering and stuff and i feel like personally i've had much more fun with like more illustrative lettering and then like i've done comics and try to do comics in the past and it's been like the hardest part is that layout and finding how to like communicate like what you're trying to say the best. And it's like, I almost get like so caught up. So I have like crazy respect for comic book artists, especially like ones like you, you who do it all um, by hand. It, it's an amazing Thanks. talent to be able to reproduce something over and over again. Like you're saying the you know, that title font is going to be the same each time, but you're still redrawing it, redoing it by hand and recreating it like perfectly each time. There's <clears throat> definitely something to be said uh, about the ability there, but then also how knowing that it needs to be done like this every time to create that continuity that you were talking about, but also it, it invokes a certain feeling and that's why you chose that font. And that's why it looks the way it does. And you want that feeling to come out each and every single time. Uh, there's, mm -hmm. that's a uh, rad to be able to, to be able to find that and then boom, just pound it home, pound it home to where that is. Now it's the brand, you know, the brand name. And uh, back to what Chris was saying, yeah, that, that you find the, the title or the logo or whatever is, is a lot of fun, but also, uh, I think the most fun for me is, is onomatopoeia and sound effects and, uh, all that kind of stuff is where I really, I, I have the most fun with those, that kind of lettering within my comics. The, the There's smacks, so many different things booms, you can do to yeah. express different kinds of lettering. It's a lot of fun. Do you, how much, um, attention do you pay when you're doing the onomatopoeia lettering to making those letters, um, kind of resonate the idea of the sound like you know if it's a smack if it's a boom there's a certain way to yeah. to project it into that frame um is it is it hard to find that balance sometimes or do you have enough um i guess reference from the past to uh to work with 
I tend to just kind of go with whatever seems to fit the scene. You know, if, if somebody's getting uh, slapped, like, and like I just drew a panel where somebody's a woman is slapping a, an old man and his dentures are flying out of his face. So <laughs> the, the lettering is going to be kind of like spit, like coming out of his mouth, uh, it says smack, you know. So, or if somebody's getting shot in the head, maybe the lettering is bloody, uh, or, um, I don't know, you can just do anything you want with it. That's why it's fun. If it's, you know, a really bold, loud sound, like a, a truck honking, you want some giant, huge font type lettering that's, you know, very, very uh, aggressive. Um, I, I was just thinking of, uh, we're talking about <clears throat> my friend Jim Callahan, who does comics and a lot of skateboard art as well. I don't know if you're familiar with his work, Chris, but uh, he, he does a lot of funny stuff with his lettering, like every once in a while, like something will just, it'll look like a black metal logo, but it's a sound effect of like somebody's head splattering, but it looks like a, a you know, symmetrical, crazy black metal logo. Uh, it's just, you know, fun stuff like that, that, that what he works in his comic. Um, Is he um, Barf Comics? Yeah, yeah, okay, Barf. Cool. Super familiar with his work. He's yeah, been yeah. Um, doing a lot for uh, Thrasher, like full comic scripts and Thrasher. Yeah, he's been doing some amazing, like, choose your own adventure skateboard comics for Thrasher yeah. that are really cool. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's that's awesome, like, what you said about, like, smacking someone in the spit saying smack, like, that's, I'd have to agree, that's, like, my favorite kind of lettering to do, something that's more, like, flowing, and, I mean, I, I default towards, like, slimy shit, that's kind of, kind yeah. of like, what, what, it, what has happened, <laughs> but... Yeah, it's it's super fun and smart when you can work lettering into a scene like that. David, did you have any issues working any of the lettering into um, the comic you just did for Holy Mountain, the inaugural, or I guess um, second first issue? No, um, there was um, so <laughs> there was one that we wanted to make sure to get in there um because danny who runs holy mountain uh he and i were were uh texting and he sent me this one clip from a uh this one panel from a captain america comic and the sound effect was fwamp f-w-a-m-p so i knew that i had to fit that in somewhere so i made sure to fit fwamp in there even a little <laughs> a little bit um but other than that, um, you know, just kind of like Tom and uh, Chris were saying, like as much as you can integrate the the lettering into the artwork um, as in sort of a, and I hate, really hate to use this word, in a synergistic way, um, uh, the more I think it comes across to the, uh, the reader of something that is... Um, you know, they're presented with something that is a, a whole, you know? Um, uh, so I, I try to approach the same way uh, as much as possible. Um, and, you know, Tom has given me ideas over here uh, just with that idea <laughs> of the guy getting smacked and then, and then the saliva spells out the word. That's just genius. <laughs> that kind of stuff. It's those little so, touches uh, that you almost overlook um, the first round. And then the more you kind of get into something, you're like, Oh, this is, I never noticed this was just fucking awesome. You know? Right. And well, it's something I, that you can't do with digital lettering. I like sneaking in other things. Like I was just thinking in the, in the humans, I think it was issue four or something. It's a big fight between these, uh, two, uh, hu uh human animal wrestlers. And, uh, at one point, one of them kicks a guy in the face and the sound effect is the word feet. <laughs> just going, just going into his face, but what did, yeah. it's like I couldn't think of another like flomp word, so I just like fuck it. I'll just put the word feet. Like, it works. <laughs> Amazing. So Keenan doesn't come up with like he leaves that stuff up to you. Is that right, Tom? Yeah, we we have a very um, <laughs> synergistic way of working together. <laughs> Is that the word for this episode? Uh, I'm I'm to scream to whenever the words uh, <laughs> says just by scream. Um, yeah, uh, he he writes his scripts kind of like a more like a screenplay and lets me kind of make the decisions on panel breakdowns, page breakdowns, everything like that. He'll he'll make suggestions of like you know the direction a bit here, but he pretty much lets me call the shots and and add lots a lot of things here and there and we live a mile apart so it's very easy for like if i 
if I think of something I want to add to it or something's not working, I can just be like, call him up or go over, sit on his porch and we'll figure it out. And, you know, it was just like uh, uh, penciling some pages for the series, the sequel series, The Jungle Now. And um, I was adding some lines to this one scene because it just seemed, seemed like it needed some. So whenever I do that, then I'll like send him the pencils and be like, what do you think? Do you want to change these lines, add your own, whatever? And sometimes he's like, cool. Sometimes he's like, no, make him say this instead. Or, you know, just like, so it's a pretty free form back and forth between us. But that's why it also takes a long time. <laughs> so oh, yeah. We're kind of slow in the process these days, but I'm enjoying being slow. So... <laughs> I know you guys mentioned in the uh, letter letter that you use like a, a, the Ames uh, like ruler for uh, lining out your type. Uh, I hadn't seen one of those since I was like in high school. I don't know where <laughs> I lost mine or didn't know how to use it correctly and stopped using it. But it just was a f flashback to me from the past. And so I ordered one on Amazon. <laughs> I'm going to be messing with it. Um, I seem no, to have lost mine at the moment. It, well, no. Now, as an older artist, I feel like it would be essential, but I hadn't seen or used one in so long. I was like, holy shit, I completely forgot these things even existed. Yeah. Did, do you use one of those, Chris? No, I i don't even remember one from being little. Yeah, I, it's, I was just like Googling it because I was like, what the hell is that? It sounds <laughs> awesome. But I don't, I don't do much like lettering like that. I mean, I like to do more, but... I, I kind of like was trying to do comics and it was just taking me so long. And I'm like, this shit is super time consuming. So again, <laughs> respect. Yeah. My, my names guide is missing. It's, it's run away for the day. I don't know where it is. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm free of freewheeling it now. No, I, I just wanted to hit on that because it, it just reminded me when I read the, the article and then uh, I'm sure there's a ton of people that probably have seen one in their life and just didn't know what the hell it was, you know? Mm -hmm. So it I, looks like something that's going to make the whole process like extraordinarily complicated, yeah, right? Like, am, is like you have to be a architect level, you know, you know like to use it, right? It's an architect tool. So it has a lot. I like, it's kind of like Photoshop. I use about 10% of its capabilities. Right. Like, right. <laughs> Ames guide is the same thing for lettering. It's like, I use like 1% of its capabilities. I don't know, even know what architects do with it. <laughs> so. Yeah, seriously. Um, but uh, it's it's a lot of fun once you learn the basics with it. To me, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I've never really it. Looks like it's a time saver. So I just would like I would go down like you know like a few millimeters and then try to line it up and then do the same and have this like crooked plane. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it definitely saves some time. Chris, when you're working <laughs> on a board, just because it's a bigger scale than like you would work on a regular paper you you work on it in in like full size scale to what the deck is going to be um i have but that's a super pain in the ass like it kind of depends on like i guess like what the money is looking like like if if i have the time it's like do i want to spend like the better part of a month working on this thing or do i want to like get it done and get it out the door but I mean, I, I try not to do them too small. It just looks stupid. <laughs> um, but like my scanner is 11 by 17. So I have done them 11 by 17. But nowadays I'll do like, I'll do like 20 inches and then I'll scan it in like two different, two different parts. Mm -hmm. So at least it's like 10 inches shorter than a real board or like in real life board. Yeah. It's just a, then, a little more true to the size. Yeah stretch it scan it in super high res and stretch it but I, I have done i've done a few the first um dope planet winkowski board i did um the one with like all the like yeah it's... yin yang and the all mm -hmm. the crazy details that was to scale and then and then they were like it's time to do a second one and i was like oh shit i think took me <laughs> a long time <laughs> um I've I've got a question, probably more for Tom, but really to all of you. <clears throat> my my biggest exposure to lettering, truthfully, is from my mom, who was a kindergarten teacher. Uh, so she taught children how to form letters. Was like her daily routine was what she did, and she would always make these little uh, like stick figures that she would draw on the chalkboard, and they would always have a little saying to try and help teach them the letters or whatever they're doing. For her 
she got really into either this person speaks in cursive because she it's this girl sounds like this or you know this young boy speaks in all capitals and and mm-hmm. you started using the font and to teach them what capitals can do but also started kind of hearing the voices in those letters you know when you use them a different way or write it a different way how much would you say you use that in a just the average you know, thought bubble or whatever, not just the main title or not the big thwomps or whatever, but just the regular uh, lettering that you do, how much does that come into play or do you try and just keep it consistent? I I do that a lot with, it it depends on the project, how much I'm doing it. Cause some of my comics that you may be less familiar with are more like abstract poetic kind of art comics where I do a lot of that, where like all the lettering will be completely different types of of lettering depending on what is being uh expressed um but i do that to a degree even within like something that's more traditional like yeah like in the blot which is mostly silent comic there's only one character that can speak and she speaks in cursive Mm. in that um but the rest of the comic is completely silent so she only had her power is that she kind of power is that she can speak um uh but um, yeah, even within like my more traditional comics, like the Jungle or the Human series, uh, I'm doing that to a, a degree. Like different characters will have like slightly different scratchier voices, or if they're yelling, it changes, or if they're whispering, it changes. You know, there's little all kinds of little things you can do to uh, change the the mood and and tone of the lettering and the vo- which alters the voice, which is something that you can, I mean, you can do it in computer lettering as well. Uh, and a lot of people do, but it's, I don't know, to me, it's not quite the same as seeing it from the same artist's hand as the drawings. So Mm -hmm. that's the way I do it. Do you guys feel the same? Like you guys use that often is, I guess what I'm asking, I'm, I'm kind of ignorant here. I, I suppose, is that just like base level that is kindergarten shit. So that's why you learn it in kindergarten or that is something that you have to develop and kind of work towards and figure, figure out. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, you know, 95% of the characters are going to speak in one font, right. And, and maybe one character or, or two, and I'm talking about like, like classic comics, right. Um, just like standard big two stuff, maybe one character in the entire issue is going to speak in something that's different. And a lot of times that will be indicated by like the shape of their, uh, word balloon or like the edge of the word balloon. It might be jagged or scratchy or something like that. Um, but you know, you get somebody, you know, who is, you know, a master like Tom who can really, uh, incorporate that a lot more because there's, um, there's a lot more freedom to what he's doing. Mm -hmm. You know, um, uh, I I have done this a bit where you kind of choose uh, a different font for different characters. You know, like for example, a robot has sort of like a very squared sort of mixture of, of uh, caps lock and lowercase, like, um, like what is the digital uh, almost like binary. Yeah, it's like the, um, you know, like a digital clock, you know, it's got the different bands that make up the, the, the numbers, um, you know, tried to do it in that sort of style. And then, you know, for the Holy Mountain comic, you know, I've got like the, the head Templar, he's using this like shaky sort of mm-hmm. letters here to sort of denote like a, a creaking voice, like a real old creaking voice. But again, you know, the the rest of the people have um a more standard font um just so that one kind of stands out has there ever um, been a project where you've been working on type for something and it just completely doesn't like you can't get it to work the way you want to whether it's a title or uh just like interior font where it just falls apart completely uh, i kind of did with the uh when i began the new series of the humans which we is retitled the jungle because they're in prison um i was going to letter it separately from the i was going to try lettering separately from the original artwork for the first time and so for the first like 10 pages i was just doing the artwork and then lettering separately and then i was going to layer that back back in in photoshop and then by like 10 pages in i was like i i'm so confused i don't know what i'm doing (laughs) i have to (laughs) i have to start lettering on the pages again so so that was kind of like a, a failed experiment. Um, 
it, it will work itself out. I, I mean, it's fine. I, I can still fix those those other pages, but uh, but yeah, I just realized that like, I can't I can't separate the two anymore um, spatially for me. Even like I know a lot of people are better at like leaving space for the word balloons to be added in later. Later, but I think when I'm working out the compositions on the page, I need them there for me. So uh, do you, do you write the the dialogue before you even start the the panels, or do you kind of create as you go? Uh, again, it depends on the project. Like with the humans or the jungle, that's I'm working with uh, a writer, Keenan, my partner on that book. Got so it. I have his script. On my own stuff, it depends. Sometimes there's a script. Sometimes it's create as you go. Yeah, this might be like super amateur shit, but I've always had like I I remember like if I tried to draw a word bubble before putting the words in, I'd always fuck up the like <laughs> spacing or like I'd have to crunch a word, and I'm like that looks horrible. So like, yeah. and I would start to just like format in the the lettering or like the yeah the words and the dialogue like real like nice how I like it and then just put a bubble around that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Back to like, the uh, the kindergarten question though, I, it reminded me. I remember very distinctly. I had a teacher who would tell stories about how to draw letters. Okay. And I remember how she told us to draw a five, and I'll try to do it. She was. She'd be like, okay, so you have a, 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 a boy, he goes to a birthday party and he eats all the cake and he gets really fat. And then he puts on a hat and he leaves. And that's how she told us how to draw a five. And I think about that every time I draw a five. That's the most ridiculous a, story. A little fat kid eating cake and wearing a hat. Amazing. <laughs> it's genius though when you can get that Whoa. visualization to remind you of something like that it's just gonna stick forever it's dude it's the office where he's like fatty uh pepperoni pepperoni tony your name is tony like where what how did that connect in your head yep. you know that reminds me of what you you said in in the interview tom which was that you know i mean it's basically the title of the interview but lettering is mark making right and what a cool way so early on you know, for you who ended up being an artist uh, to have that sort of like implanted in you since the beginning of your education, you know, that um, that lettering is mark making and it can be fun and, and, and also it can it's tell like, a story. And it's a storytelling letter mark making too. Right. Yeah, so yeah I, didn't, I didn't think about that. That is interesting. <laughs> you know, the, that's really um, incredible. To jump back to the beginning where we were talking about the elusive font that you were trying to figure out where the hell it came from um, in these old comics. And you mentioned sign painting that you were, you know, in the, the intro to it. And that was my That's first right. impression of it because you can see where the brush would start. You could see where it would connect the boldness yeah. of those letters. And mm -hmm. um, I, I couldn't find a perfect example. I went, I went through like old type books that I had encyclopedia typefaces, you know, old from the fifties, uh, I figured maybe I'd find some hint of this font that you're showing. Couldn't find anything. Closest thing I found is a friend of mine in Chicago who has a buddy who's been hand painting signs for about 50 years named Mike Mayer. Mike Meyer, M-E-Y-E-R. Oh, Meyer, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, he's a legend. Legend. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's crazy. And that's the closest I could find was his sign lettering that he uses pretty uh, regularly. So if you're wondering about that cue he kicks his cue on the bottom. It's not through the side, but that, I don't know if that's ah. a, I don't know if that's a thing or not. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Is the, that's is the cue kick to the bottom? Uh, yeah. This is Dick Bird's freehand letter. Oh, wow. It's awesome. like, um, I don't know. My wife got it for me like a long time ago and I've talked to like tattoo artists who kind of use it as a, like a standard, but it's like, just this sign painter, hot rod, um, pinstriper guy. And, uh, he has like some really sick, like black letter fonts, like this, like rat finkish type deal here. Um, it's like, I know there's examples of this stuff out there. I just, just got to dig them up. Man. That's oh, great. Has, has, like, I got really that book. <laughs> yeah. It's, wow. it's, pretty sick. it's a little book too. I don't know. I don't know. It might be cheap. I don't know. It might be, cool. uh, I'm definitely going to pick that up. Yeah, I need that. What, Chris? One of your one of your letterings that is probably one of my favorite is the Vacation Forever uh, lettering on that the skeleton under the the palm tree. I, from what I understand, one of the most jocked and stolen images <laughs> like ever. 
<laughs> uh, but it, it's because it's so awesome. And that's such a, it, that font to me tells the story. You know what I mean? In that picture, you know, the font fits oh, with the story just so perfectly. I, I thought that one was great. And, and again, one of, one of my favorite images, I still wear that shirt like constantly. It's actually one of my favorite work shirts, believe uh, ironically nice. enough. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. That, that one's funny. Cause I drew that. I wish I had one around, but I drew that so long ago. And the first one I drew, like there's in Photoshop or illustrator or whatever on your computer, it comes with brush script. It's like just a script font. <laughs> and I, I like typed it out, but kind of like getting back to what Tom was saying about like, not really liking the look of digital type. Like I, I typed out vacation forever and like that script. And then I was like, uh, I don't know. So I printed it out and then I like traced over it. Cause I liked the form, but I wanted it to have more of like a hand drawn feel. So the early vacation forever shirt I did is like just me tracing like a stock font. And then I did later ones where I tried to like do my own script, like based off like the sign painting book and stuff like that. Yeah. Excellent. Actually, I wanted to ask you about that. Uh, or, or both of you guys, um, uh, Tom and Chris, cause I, uh, so I got this, this book, uh, about two months ago, right. The art of the Simon and Kirby studio. Right. So it's like 300 pages of original art, right. Howard Ferguson and Ben Oda lettering like two of the greatest of all time. Right. Mm -hmm. And their stuff is so <laughs> fucking precise. Right. Especially on the title lettering. And, and I decided that I wanted to do something similar to what they did, but I could not make my hand do it uh, freehand, uh, even with the Ames guide and, as you know, uh, a, a boundary for it. So what I ended up doing was what you did, Chris, I print, I, I found a type that I wanted and then I taped it to the back of the, the, the page and I traced it. Right. So I'm trying to figure out like, is that a common practice, you know, of like the old letterers, Tom, do you do that too? Like, thank you for saying that, Chris, cause that was going <laughs> to be one of my questions, but do you do that I, as well, Tom? I've done it for certain fonts that are, uh, or effects that are difficult. Like, like it's, it's kind of hard to do stenciled lettering. Like, you know, like if you were spray painting stenciled on the side of a bus or something, it's really hard to get that done by hand for me. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll print out and trace that. Or like if I needed, like if I was drawing like a newspaper and I wanted the, the, the title, you know, the, the tribune or whatever to be like really perfect, I might, I might trace that. Um, so, uh, but I would only, I only trace, uh, when I do that, I only trace in the pencils and then I ink free, uh, just by hand. So I can, uh, so it'll still come out more hand, like hand quality than, uh, tracing. So, but very rarely, um, Okay. Yeah, that gives it that consistency too. Cause you don't want to like stick out like a sore thumb, like everything's all inked by hand. And then you have this like, it's too perfect right. sometimes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's that's the problem with a lot of modern comics is the lettering is too perfect and it just yeah. sticks out like a sore thumb. Totally. Yeah, um, it can really kill it for me. Like yeah. even some some people have like really cool art and then you can tell it's I think even worse than like a really clean font might be like the mock comic like typed font sometimes because mm -hmm. it's like I don't know if you have like two two E's next to each other, it's like the exact same thing. So yeah. 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 There's a lot of those fake fonts. You can trick them. You can program it to have like three or four different E's so you can like do yeah. different ones. <laughs> that's funny. Oh, that's smart. How do you, have yeah. you guys seen the rise in like the, uh, I don't know, just the accessibility, I guess, of, um, what they advertise as hand drawn or hand shading or, you know, like the, uh, the plugin packs for Photoshop now that just have like yeah. the stippling and like the bullshit kind of already done for you to a certain degree. Yeah. Um, ha have you ever used one? I'm, I'm just curious. I, I haven't personally messed with anything, but I got to imagine that it doesn't work as well as you think it's going to look. I think certain people who have learned how to use those tools or use finesse them enough have, have the ability to like make really good art out of it. I personally do not enjoy it. <laughs> I'd rather do it by hand. Um, I don't even enjoy 
drawing on the computer that much, but uh, I know some brilliant people who do brilliant stuff that way. So I don't want to say anything against it. It's just not really for me. To, but there's, yeah, there's tons of those. I, they're advertised at me every day on Instagram, those brush filters. Mm -hmm. And then those like, make your comic look retro with these filters <laughs> and stuff like that. I'm just like, I, I know how to do that the old way. So <laughs> stop advertising to me. But some people do brilliant work with it. So I'm, I'm I, you know, if you can make it work, then make it work. So yeah, I would echo that point too. I've seen some people do some really cool stuff with it. Um, I have tried them and I'm just like, it doesn't really look like how it looks when I do it. And it's really hard and time consuming to like try to make it look that way. So why not just fucking try it and then scan it in? Right. Yeah. Like I, I was talking to the, the, the young artist, uh, or I don't even know how young he is, but I assume he's younger than me, <laughs> Jared Cody Wolf. Um, and he, uh, I was surprised that a lot of his, his artwork is, is painted digitally because a lot of it does have that quality of like, it looks like he's painting on canvas, uh, but he's somebody who's learned how to make it look convincing, at least to my eye <laughs> um, <laughs> and does good work with it. So um, he still draws, I think he still inks by hand, but he's, he's like doing digital painting under it. Um, yeah. So yeah, some people get really like pissed off and like anti um, like procreate or iPad or tools like that. And uh like, I don't know, I've seen some people that use it and it looks really well. And I'm like, well, this person obviously knows how to draw. They're just using a tool that they might be easier for them. Maybe they don't have a ton of space to get ink everywhere or something. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah. the next generation is growing up without, you know, doing everything digitally anyway. So yeah, no, no arguing against it. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to be one of those old curmudgeons like, no, you yeah. can't draw <laughs> with a computer. Yeah. I'll tell you I, what. I just yeah. personally can't draw with a computer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. It's kind of hard. The computer to me it has its purpose, obviously. But for me, it was always like layout and design, page design, not necessarily like the artwork itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a there's a few people, you know, like Chris and Tom have said that use it to good effect, but they seem to work like as hard on the digital stuff as the people who do the the do it by hand you know they right. don't like coast and rely on the digital to to um do it for them their their attention to the detail is like for example um uh christopher sparandio who's um uh, goes by pinko joe on yeah. uh, instagram right he so he created a font um and and i've said it's basically the only digital font that i trust but it's called tomb and it's a um uh a play off of the leroy lettering guide font from uh from old ec comics um and it looks phenomenal right mm -hmm. you know and you've got like these old ec comics that are using you know non-hand lettered stuff even or, or mechanically reproduced i guess because they are still doing it with their hands right, right? typeset right yeah exactly um and you know somebody like uh christopher sparandio who does this and is a literally a, a professor of comics right he's going to put in all the knowledge that he has behind this digital output that he's doing and he's going to make it look amazing right yeah um, but when you're, you know, like when you download the free fonts, right. And you plug those into your comic and it's like, everything is on a justified, right. Type set. Um, it just, there's nothing that cannot compare. Chris, to, Chris you worked on a font, right? Did you have, uh, issues adjusting stuff to your liking or, or was it just kind of a project that you worked on to put it out? Um, are you, you talking about the one with Kern Club? Mm -hmm. That recent, it was like a old English type deal. Yeah. Yeah. They, um, they're two designer dudes that work like separately and they kind of did this collaboration. It's called Kern Club and they release fonts with like artists and a lot of them are free. If they're not free, they're really cheap. Um, but they hit me up to see if I wanted to do a font, like based off some stuff I've had in pieces that I hand drew. Cool. And then I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Cause I'm kind of getting sick of drawing the same font. Like every time, like I'll do like an old English one, like a slimy one or like a fire one basically. <laughs> and uh, 
So it took me a really long time to draw out all the letters and I was kind of like freaking out about it. And I wanted to make sure they're all like, I, I drew them all on like a, like a four by four grid. Cause I remember in a typography class and in college, I, I just remember the four by four square grid, try to keep things proportional, but yeah, I did all the caps, all the lowercase and then like nine, nine through zero or one through yeah. nine and then zero. And then a couple of like, like cash sign ampersand. I was like, Oh my God, it was like, <laughs> kind of drive me nuts. I'd rather just like have my word that actually is communicating something and just draw that out every time. But it's cool to have a font out there. And those dudes, like, I just like drew it all with like pencil on, on my iPad on like the pencil thing. That's one thing I use it for is like, if it's like an embroidery thing that needs to be like super vector, I'll draw it on there. And that's, that works really well. But, um, I sketched out all the letters and then they did all like the vectorizing and like all the, whatever you do to make a font. And, um, then they put it out there. So that was really fun. That was a cool experience. I don't think I could have done that on my own. That sounds really cool. Yeah, I, I designed a font for a, a comic that never happened. Uh, I was working with this metal band and I, just for the, uh, I wanted the sound effects to have all this like very metal, you know, very metallic, like classic 80s kind of like font. So I, I designed one, but I reached the, I was, I was going to do the whole, all the letters and then I realized like, fuck man, this, I'm just going to do the ones I need. <laughs> so I ended up like it down to like, what are the words I'm going to need? Like crack, pal, like, and then just like, so I did about half an alphabet. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's difficult to design a, uh, a font <laughs> uh, that way. And I, another side story, it's funny, I, I worked at, 20 years ago, I worked at Disney as a, uh, a web uh, animator doing like flash animation and stuff. And the, the font that we used for Mickey Mouse was actually a font designed by the artist Coop you know, the, the hot rod and, and, uh, naked ladies, devil ladies artist. Yeah. <laughs> his, so his, his font was what Disney online used for every Mickey mouse cartoon that I worked on. <laughs> <Hell yeah. laughs> so, oh, that's great. Kind of, that's uh, wild. Uh, it was, it was one of those, like how you remember that or maybe just all around house industries. They were a yeah. font company that would do, uh, artist fonts. So yeah, it was one of those that I have the, uh, rat fink font. Pack. Right. Yeah. All the Ed Roth, yeah. There you go. There you go. Those, <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you brought them up because those those are some masters of lettering right there. Totally. Yeah. I haven't uh, I haven't looked at any of their stuff lately, but yeah, they always have the best. Before, um, obviously, you guys are kind of like into the same stuff and the same style of like those old like Rat Fink, uh, you know, the Hot Rods, the Naked Women, um, all the fun stuff about comics. Um, <laughs> Do you remember your first like introduction as a kid to lettering? Because obviously we're bombarded by advertising constantly. So I remember like as a kid, as the same way you draw band names like Metallica in your notebook or whatever, I would, you know, you try to get the Coca-Cola letter, like lettering, like just proper, you know, was there stuff that you remember as like a young kid, like trying to copy or recreate? It's definitely band logos for me. <laughs> I think was probably the beginning of that. Yeah. We, my brother and I, my brother was older than me, so he got me into into all the bands way too young. But I remember we had this we had this closet in our house that was behind a wall. It had a, like a, a trap wall, like fake closet room mm. that we called the hideout. Yeah. And uh, and when I was around five, and he was probably ten, we uh, we painted all of our favorite band logos all over the walls of that. So it was like Kiss and Def Leppard and Rat and everything and all of them have like so such intricate designs it's a that's definitely like something i think about still when i'm like lettering or anything is like metal logos <laughs> yeah the brand at yeah. that point for those bands was almost just as iconic as the music you know what i mean you'd see those t-shirts or those those band logos and you knew immediately like oh that's the def leopard font or that's the metallica font uh i mean mm -hmm. kiss was a whole fucking production mm -hmm. um but yeah, it's like those, those resonate to the kids now that still wear those vintage t-shirts that probably don't own a kiss album. Um, but they're like, yeah, this is, this is cool design. You know, fun fact about kiss, uh, you know, they, in the, the traditional logo, they have the lightning bolt S's, the SS, mm -hmm. 
that looks like the Nazi SS yep. symbol. <laughs> so if you look up a German Kiss record, the German in Germany Kiss has a different logo because they all, all, all uh, Nazi symbols. So mm. if you look up a German Kiss logo, it's a totally different S. So it looks like a backwards Z. Huh. Huh. Rip. <laughs> Interesting. Kiss. Um, yeah, kids. <laughs> <laughs> That's really interesting too, because uh, aren't like all of the guys in Kiss Jewish? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They just wanted a cool logo, and they didn't. I, I think Paul Stanley actually designed it. Um, huh. Yeah, I was just watching. He did. <laughs> yeah, I was just watching the uh, decline of Western civilization. I think the second one, mm. where it's like the hair metal years. And Paul Stanley's mm-hmm. just laying in bed with like six women while he does that interview the whole time. It was great. <laughs> wow. It's pretty great. It's pretty good. And like <laughs> half of it, you're like, this can't be real. This is staged. And then the more it goes on, you're like, no, this is exactly how these people are. Yeah. It's nuts. Wow. It's funny how uh, those bands are like, for the most part, pretty forgettable music um, with the exception of like, you know, and I mean, Kiss does have some good, some good songs and stuff but like as far as like the hair metal bands they like some of the most forgettable music but some of the most like solid unforgettable logos if you want to talk about lettering and stuff like it's so oh, yeah. precise and sick and every even like the shittiest shittiest metal band in the 80s still had a stellar logo yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, Matt, going back to your question about like early stuff, I mean, for me, it's like movie, uh, studio logos, right? I watched like an inordinate amount of movies as a, as a little kid. Right. And so like, you've got the United artists one that's in front of the Rocky movies, but then especially you have the Disney logo, right. Where they draw out the Disney logo. Right. That's probably the one that sticks out in my mind the most. Hmm. That makes sense. Yeah, that, that's definitely one for me too. Yeah. The Disney logo, and then also, um, I had like the Ninja Turtle cartoon uh, yeah. VHS tapes, and I think it's TFE or something is like the production company, and it's actually written on that like kindergarten dotted line, uh, like two solid lines on the in the dotted line in the middle, and it says like TFE or something. But they write it out, and I that really stuck with me forever. And it's three simple lowercase letters. But just the whole process of it coming onto the screen, like, was embedded into my brain. And also, I think about a lot, uh, two things. One, um, the on uh, Sesame Street, there was the guy that would go around and paint numbers on things. Do you remember that guy? Mm-hmm. It was always, like, a little silent short film, and the, the number of the week would be 12. Yeah. And he just, like, walked up to a fire hydrant and pull out a paintbrush and paint the number 12 on it. That's that's an early lettering memory for me, and then also kind of similarly, like maybe you guys are younger, but Schoolhouse Rock always had uh-huh. like I remember some of them just had like huge, big, bold like letter mm-hmm. animated letters that would like come out of the ground and stuff like that, like all that. And that stuff was all throughout Sesame Street too. Like they had some really great psychedelic animators working on Sesame Street and yeah. stuff in the seventies that did some really amazing stuff with lettering as well as cartoons. So. I forgot about the Schoolhouse Rock stuff, but just the second you mentioned it, I can draw the connection between like the onomatopoeia that we were talking about earlier oh, yeah. and every mm-hmm. Schoolhouse Rock cartoon. You know, it's uh, so much of that dialogue is animated and like coming at you and flying at you with like an emphasis and, you know, a boldness. Mm-hmm. When they're screaming, it's coming out big. Um, I kind of forgot all about that. I should go back and rewatch that stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah remembering all this all these like intros to movies and stuff now that you guys are saying it because i'm like i don't know if i ever had like a interest in like drawing lettering from those things but i definitely remember all those like i was trying Mm -hmm. to think of like the first time i was like drawing lettering and it would probably be that fucking s with the three line the six lines the stucy dude yeah (laughs) if that wasn't your first introduction to lettering as a child you can get the hell out yeah (laughs) (laughs) I think I wrote sex in the sand at the beach once too and I got in trouble from my aunt because my cousin like, started writing it too of course I, mean, I distinctly remember like drawing fire like flaming letters and like anarchy signs and just like shit that I didn't really even know what I was drawing but just the idea of it seemed cool at the time to me I had an older brother so I was like this is punk rock on huh, Jacob look at it <laughs> 
at what age did you guys realize that you could do like a block lettering where if you couldn't you didn't have to just write it in a bubble you could throw that drop behind it have at an angle and actually create depth in that word r really quick for me it was like last week <laughs> <laughs> I, I was the i was the one in elementary school that everybody made draw draw the letters the 3d letters because nobody could figure out how to do it yeah uh, okay. i don't so, remember what age but yeah i was always the one that people were like oh tom can draw it yeah <laughs> See, I was the kid coming up to you asking, hey, can you draw this for me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I had to draw a lot of Garfield back then. Garfield was Garfield, huge. Yeah. Garfield, yeah. Heathcliff. Uh, yep. It's like yep. all those Calvin old and Hobbes. comic strips. Yeah, Calvin and Hobbes. All the Sunday comics. Like, remember that being like huge. Uh, just those, even just like the simplest, uh, you know, one panel Sunday comics is like usually something that made you think with dialogue. Even if it was just one sentence or something, you know. Mm -hmm. Completely off topic, Chris, while I have you here, I have to ask, bro. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if you remember this, but the first time that we ever met was down in San Diego. And I came by, I was, I don't know, it was probably, gosh, seven or eight years ago now. Uh, you were in a show in, I think it was in North Park, yeah, right? Yeah, at Visual, when you did the first Night Watch show, I think. So I come yeah. into town and me and Matt and everybody proceed to just get hammed. And the show is at like, you know, five in the evening, still light out, you know, still a very respectable spot. And I show up just plowed. Uh, and you had painted the toilet seat with the, uh, I believe with the Sasquatch on it. And you had it yeah. hanging and I come up all wasted and I touched it and it fell and broke the toilet seat and fell to the ground and you were the coolest motherfucker about that dude like my drunk ass is like <laughs> on the ground like feeling like a complete jackass like trying going to find glue and extra screws and you're like hey dude don't worry about it no big deal and you just hung it back up on the wall and and went along with the night but dude i just had to had to tell everybody this guy right here he's the <laughs> shit man <laughs> well i mean what am i gonna do get mad yeah, yeah, that's exactly yeah, what you were for it or something. I think I think everyone else is getting mad at us. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Oh man, that's so funny. I was hoping you weren't gonna say that. Like you don't look anything like what you looked like back then. I was like, wait, is this the fucking dude who knocked the shit off yeah. the wall and it like smashed to pieces? I, I, and then I was like and then I was like picked it up and I was like trying to put it back in the wall and you were like you were like four inches from my face, like, oh, Dude, did I break it? Did I break it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so uh, that's how bad it was and he still treated me w like with kindness and with like a human, uh, so. Yeah, I don't care. I was probably pretty drunk too. I mean, <laughs> um but yeah, I mean, I drew I, I painted a Bigfoot butt on a toilet seat and said Bigfoot butts drive me nuts mm -hmm. and I hung it at an art show <laughs> and someone got drunk and knocked it off. It's like it was meant to be. Yeah. I'm not going to get mad. Hey, you broke my toilet seat, man. I bought it at Home Depot for 10 bucks and painted on it. <laughs> well, <clears throat> I bought a shirt that night, and like I said, I still wear it like damn near every week while I'm working. <laughs> Dude, I probably wouldn't even remember that night if that didn't happen. So <laughs> Yeah, there, <laughs> I gave you the <laughs> Well, thank you, bro. It was a good story. Cheers, man. I've never been that Amazing. drunk in an art show since, just so you know. I, I learned my lesson. Dude, we were just out in Raleigh, North Carolina with David, and um, I thought we were going to knock some art off the wall that night, but we did all right. We didn't do it. Because I stayed no, sober. No, man. Oh, <laughs> I did. I did. I knocked one of those photo prints off and tore the corner, man. Uh, that is not I'm your bad. fault. I'm, I'm bad. sorry. No. Sorry. No. I, we, I we uh, should have secured Durham? it better. What's uh, that? Raleigh. Oh, Raleigh. Okay. Yeah. My sister lives in uh, Durham. I love oh, it. yeah. It's great. Yeah, Durham's great. Raleigh, Raleigh could use some work, but Durham is amazing. <laughs> it's, it's I'm I'm in Nightdale, which is just outside of Raleigh, so uh, cool. I'm yeah, I'm, I'm happy. With Raleigh. Them. I feel like they're close together, so yeah, yeah, I love, totally. I love going down there. It's really fun. Yeah, it was beautiful. Yeah, man. Durham is great. Yeah, we we had a good ass time. Um, but anyways, all right, guys, before we uh, wrap this up and. Get it going. Um, I guess let's just break it down. We'll start with you, David. What do you have going on? What do you want to promote, man? Uh, so I'm on Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash David Moses, um, where I write about various things uh, like Jack Kirby and lettering and uh, some other things. 
Um, I'm working on a comic now that I can't really talk about yet, but it's going to be kickstarted. So, you know, keep your eye out for that. And I'm on Instagram at d.moses.l. Awesome. Cool. And you can also find his stuff at ratnessstickerco.com. Ratness. Hey. All right. And Tom, how about you, brother? Um, I'm currently slowly working on the sequel to The Humans, a new series called The Jungle. And I post about it on my Patreon as well, patreon.com slash Tom Neely. And uh, my Instagram is I will destroy Tom. And my website is I will destroy you dot com. Um, yeah, uh, that's about it. <laughs> awesome. Chris? <clears throat> Um, you can find my stuff at nightwatchstudios.com. We've been slowing it down a little bit, but we just came out with like a koozie pack. We're just doing fun shit. And, um, and other than that, just doing skateboards for Santa Cruz every, every once in a while when I can do that and releasing clothing with uh, lurking class. So I'd say keep your eye on those things for new shit. Dope. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for uh, talking with yeah, us today. I seriously. Mean, like I said, we focused on lettering, but, you know, it, it wasn't too serious. I thought it was a great, lighthearted conversation about how fun lettering can be. <laughs> yeah. David, thank great, you. great seeing you again, man. Chris, thanks again for being so, so cool and understanding of a guy. I, I'm glad I was able to get that off my chest with you. <laughs> Tom, oh, seriously, it. it was an honor having you here, man. Thank you for agreeing to be here with us and, and being so open and sharing, you know, your opinions and, and your points of view. They're beautiful, man. Thanks for, for the validation. Thank you all for having us. Yeah. You guys yeah, take care. Thank you guys. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye. See you guys later. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> See ya. Nice to meet you guys. Likewise, man. Yeah. We'll do it again soon. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's go for hours. Yeah, we really could. I have really questions could. for you, Chris. I have questions. Right. So I might uh yeah, we need to do this again soon. Hell yeah. Yes. All right. We'll All right. Uh, get in touch, man. We'll, let's talk. Yeah, we'll link All up. All right, word. There, guys. Thanks, guys.